The Farmington football team has had one losing season in the past 10. Unfortunately, that came last year when the Knights went 3-7. and seven. I'm Chad Speaker inside the Farmington football camp, where we'll learn from new coach Eric Krupe how the Knights will turn it back around. Krupe says everything's in place for the Knights to regain their winning ways. Well, it's a great location, uh, without question, um, where it's situated, the people here, uh, the size of the town, uh, its traditions, the fact that it has been successful just here pretty recently. And facility-wise, you're not going to really find much better facilities uh, in the state of Missouri than we have here at, uh, at Farmington High School. And that's one thing. Try to get across to the kids that they understand that what they've got is nice and need to be appreciative of the nice things that they have. And Krupe says the talent is also in place. First things first, just starting to get to know players. Uh, you know, put faces to names, uh, understand their personalities, and then be able to see what they're like in terms of their athleticism, how they run around, uh, what their strength levels are. Uh, so that was the first part of it, is just sort of get a feel for our players. Um, one thing I found is we've got really good kids here in this program. That's, it's always more fun when you're able to work with some good kids, and we've got that here. One of those good kids is quarterback Justin Bame, who passed for 1,500 yards last year and ran for 800 more. Kruby loves the qualities he sees in Bame. He is a true dual threat quarterback. I mean, his his feet, he can do damage with his feet just as well as he can with his arm. Uh, he, he's pretty firmly entrenched as our starter. He'll be um, starting off for a uh, full second year here as a senior, and, and he's one of our team leaders, and, and we're going to count on him to allow us to be successful this season. And Bame says he's comfortable moving the ball with his arm or his legs. I would say I'm a pass first player, and then I'll run if, you know, I don't, try to take many chances if I can run you know I feel comfortable doing that too it's just uh, the place that we're called you know uh, you try and do that but whatever happens during the play happens while the Knights returned their quarterback the running back position has been picked clean through graduations and defections the race to carry the pig skin right now is wide open well it's really a four-headed monster right now at tailback one of the things we want to find out offensively is is, is there a guy that steps up and, and stands out at that position uh, really there's four kids uh, running with varsity right now um, senior wise Garrett Duncan uh, who's played defensive end and linebacker for us in the past uh, Scotty Roberts is a junior. Um, Brayden Bond, also a junior, and then Colin Hewitt, who's just a sophomore, but was pretty good for us as a freshman on the freshman squad last year. The Knights lost their top wide receiver in Evan Dunneman, but Bame says a crop of young receivers from last year are ready to step up. Devin Eggle started a lot of games last year for a portion of the season. He got injured a little bit, so he took time off of that. Uh, I'll be expecting a lot from him. And then Hunter Corcoran has been, he's played all four years of high school. He's ready to be a varsity receiver and a threat. We've got a uh, junior, Connor Forsythe, who really, really started playing at the end of last year at receiver, and he's, he's really coming around. He's got big and strong, so we've, I've got a lot of options this year. Four of the five starting offensive linemen also depart, but Krupe likes what he's seen from the bigs. I think we'll be fine along the trenches. We may not have as much depth as we like, but I think the kids that we have are going to be solid varsity contributors for us. With so many new starters on the offensive side, the system will remain nearly the same. Krupe will trust the returning offensive coordinator, Derek Eves. It's going to be very similar. Terminology has not changed offensively. Uh, we want to make sure, because we're changing some things defensively, we don't want to make wholesale changes terminology-wise, and, and there is really no reason to change the terminology from an offensive standpoint, so that's going to be the same. The base concepts that we're going to run are going to be the same. There may be a couple wrinkles, a couple add-ins here and there, but for the most part, it's what we've done in the past and we're going to continue to do, and, and the kids are comfortable and familiar with it. The largest change for the Knights will come on the defensive side of the ball. They'll change from a 4-2 with some linebacker defensive back hybrids to more of a 4-3. The man in the middle will be linebacker Trent Weidman. This year we're going to be running a 4-3. Compared to last year we kind of bounced around from the 3-3 three -three to the 4-2, you know, changing up. But this year running the 4-3, you know, hoping to stop the run game a lot more, you know, and put pressure on our D-backs. But I feel like we have our senior D-backs that really are ready for the challenge, you know, to cover guys up and make it happen since we're putting another person in the box. Weidman will have a fine tradition to hold up in taking over for others, Ryder and Roper Garrett. It's some big shoes to fill definitely with Roper and Ryder, you know, both great linebackers, you know, playing at SEMO now. It's definitely an honor taking it over for him, and I hope I can... You know, somewhat take it over for him, make them proud, you know, farm to middle linebacker. Roper was, you know, great to watch, and Ryder was kind of like a big brother to me, you know, kind of taught me around, you know, so if I mess, mess this play up, you know, he's like, see, you got to do this on this play, you know, and kind of show me what to do and guide me the right way.
And while Farmington returns only four starters on defense, Weidman says he will have some strong running mates. Adam Maple, uh, Peyton Napoli on the D-line, and we have Garrett Duncan, he's a linebacker. He played some D-line last year, you know, switching over. And we have Kobe Moon and uh, Nicky Greco and Hunter Ballou and all them are D-backs, so definitely going to help us out there. Weidman says he's looking forward to the season and to helping to restore Farmington back to a winning program. Hit the weight room really hard, you know, got bigger and faster and ran a lot. Did a lot of summer conditioning and to footwork and stuff like that. A lot of people have bought in and said we're going to make this year better and we're going to buy in and get better as a, as a team and as a program. We definitely want to have a winning season, you know, and be better than we were last year and set the standards for the younger guys and show them how Farmington football is really played. Farmington looks for a victory number one, August 30th, against Festus. Your home once again for a play-by-play -play and video coverage of Knights football is AM800 KREI and MIMOinfo.com. I'm Chad Speaker for Regional Radio Sports.